Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Tony Beretta, Senior Vice President for Government Relations for Kaiser Permanente. And I want to thank everyone here in the room uh, for spending the day with us talking about a very fascinating and important subject, um, what work we can all do together uh, on suicide prevention. I thought the morning was actually very constructive um, and exciting to think about um, the afternoon and all that we're going to be considering this afternoon as well. Um, I also want to welcome, um, for the folks in the room here, you won't know this, but um, this afternoon for this session, we are live streaming this session across our uh, Kaiser Permanente Workplace uh, uh, platform forum. Um, so this will be going out to the Kaiser Permanente community across the country who's tuning in on their phones, computers, iPads, or whatever other device they have to access that platform, which is a, a very useful way to bring us together. Um, but I have the great pleasure uh, this afternoon to introduce my boss, um, Bernard Tyson, the chairman and CEO of Kaiser Foundation Health Plan. Um, Bernard assumed the role of uh, CEO in 2013 and has been chair since January of 2014. Um, he has a career at Kaiser Permanente um, that spanned more than 30 years. Um, during that time, he successfully managed almost everything across our organization, serving in roles from hospital administrator to division president to president and chief operations officer. Um, he has a master's degree. Um, in business and health service administration and a bachelor's degree in health service management from Golden Gate University in San Francisco. And he earned a leadership certificate from Harvard University. Um, I will say that in the years since Bernard has um, taken the helm at Kaiser Permanente, um, it has been very gratifying to be the leader of the public policy function at Kaiser Permanente um, in this space. Bernard has taken the issue of mental health and wellness and brought it to the center of our public policy activities. And he's brought it to the center of concern as an operational matter as well. I can tell you in our senior leadership conversations, we are frequently talking about these issues of mental health and wellness, the need to develop um, a, stronger, uh, a stronger platform to provide the services that are needed to address problems of the pipeline. Um, and all manners of issues that we believe at Kaiser Permanente, we have a unique opportunity um, to try to help lead the way with many others to improve the mental health system in the United States. So with that, Bernard, I simply want to thank you for being here with us and invite you to come on up and let us know what's on your mind. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Tony. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Yeah, exactly. Uh, what did y'all have for lunch? Uh, uh, thrive, yeah, uh, thrive food, huh? <laughs> uh, good afternoon. Yeah, we're Tony said that we're live, so I want to make sure that the uh, the audience on the live streaming know that we are r really here. <clears throat> it's uh, it's really really great uh, to be here this afternoon and to share um, a couple of uh, top of mind uh, comments uh, with you. Um, the leadership team and I have been traveling around the country, which we tend to do at this time, uh, looking at the strategic plans uh, from the regions uh, as part of our annual uh, exercise to sort of assess where we are today, what set of assumptions did we make last year, and uh, how many of those assumptions have panned out to be true, and if not, why not, and how does this inform us as we go forward, um, looking out over the next you know, one year, three years, 10 years. Um, it's been really um, energizing and engaging um, the whole landscape is changing around us. Uh, so we're not the only ones going through change. The environment uh, in which we exist is um, really uh, changing. Um, during each of those rounds this time, we actually spent 
uh, focused time on mental health and wellness in each of our regions, the latest thinking with the strategies around it, um, what else can and should we be doing? What are the challenges and issues? Um, and as one region said, the good news is um, the belief that uh, Kaiser Permanente uh, and others, <clears throat> but Kaiser Permanente um, r really being on the forefront of working and putting resources against the issue of stigma uh, is paying off that we believe it is generating um, more people coming forward to say, I can't find my words, but I know I need to talk to someone, or I have found my words and know my words, and now I'm telling you I need help and assistance and guidance um, to build resilience and all the other things that we talk about. And then it's just a stressful environment that people find themselves, and we all do, um, existing in. And so people are, in fact, um, around the country, uh, in fact, even beyond the country, around the world, um, speaking out around the challenges that we see collectively in mental health and wellness and whether or not the health care system is equipped uh, in the 21st century to address uh, the issues of the 21st century uh, that we find ourselves uh, grappling with on a daily basis. And I don't need to remind this audience, but you probably know it better than I. I mean, it's everything from being wired 24-7 uh, with wireless technology that allows us to stay in touch with news as it happens 24-7. Uh, uh, you know, many of us, we sit in meetings like this, and none of us anymore turn these things off. Um, and so it, it uh, flashes and vibrates, and in a couple of, of the executive cases who for some reason don't know how to put their phones on vibrate, it rings uh, <laughs> in some of our meetings. And um, it's just news all day long, and, and not just news um, about what's going on in this country. It's just news around the world. And as we all know, the whole purpose of news is to share bad news. And so most of it is bad news and or news that continues to generate, you know, tension and friction and all those things. And so you have those kinds of challenges that we find ourselves dealing with um, every single day. Um, we have the stresses of nobody has enough time anymore because everything is moving so quickly. Uh, now you see it. Now it's gone. Uh, we live with uh, text messaging. Uh, and I actually am a big fan of text messaging because, you know, short to the point. Uh, and you get a lot of things said and done. The problem, though, with text messaging is when you misinterpret the intention of the short words, right? And then that leads to something else. Uh, I mean, Pat Cornier may tell me something innocently by text, and all of a sudden I said, wow, well, he must be having a bad day and <laughs> must be forgetting who he's talking to. Also, let me call him up and set him straight. And then, <laughs> then we have to meet for coffee and... <laughs> reunite ourselves, calm down and all that. So stressful times that we all find ourselves in. Uh, what hasn't changed significantly in the midst of all the changes that have happened significantly, what hasn't changed is the fundamental delivery system of how to deal with and support and bring resources to mental health and mental health and well-being. And, and so we've spent time at Kaiser Permanente uh, in a wide range of us talking to the industry and to the country and to anyone else who would live, uh, listen 
that we now live in the 21st century and we need to rethink, as we said in the early generation of this, we need to rethink the whole idea of the metaphor of how we detach the head from the rest of the body and thinking about mental health and wellness. And the fact that we've built systems and records and everything where when you say in the industry, I have a mental problem, you get designated to a whole different place and, and you get recorded in a whole different way and, and the beat goes on. And we feel like the time has come for us to rethink um, the whole makeup of mental health and wellness. Uh, the fact of the matter is uh, the brain is like any other organ in the body. And so how do we? in the 21st century begin to think through how do we drive that kind of strategy. Um, We have reorganized uh, in in some ways um, our whole delivery around this thinking. Uh, We have a fantastic national leader um, for mental health uh, services and and, uh, Dr. Uh, Mordecai is just amazing. Uh, We have a whole leadership team at the national level and then we have the connections across the entire region. Um, it's an all-in, all-hands-on-debt strategy and approach, which gives us, I think, the best opportunity for how do we, in fact, build um, an organization that can respond to the ever-growing demands and needs of millions of people uh, around the country. And, and now we've added into this, this complicated topic to many of us um, called suicide. Uh, it is and has been um, one of the areas where we've gone in it um, really to better understand and to see what else we can do um, as an organization to really put our collective arms around um, prevention uh, and making sure that we do other things uh, because every life is precious. And we have uh, learned a lot. We have uh, fully engaged uh, others in this area. Uh, We have on our board of directors one of the past Um, Surgeon Generals, uh, Dr. Uh, Regina Benjamin, and when she was the Surgeon General uh, under the uh, Obama administration, she actually, her organization actually even put together a white paper on suicide and suicide prevention. And so you can go online and actually see work that was done in the federal government thanks to her leadership and also her passion um, on this on this topic at a at a personal level um, i've been personally impacted uh, by many stories and um, many versions of understanding um, this as a part of both health and wellness, but also as part of our model, which is prevention, which is how do we now um, uh, figure out the code uh, to prevent this from happening? And what does that mean for a fully integrated system like Kaiser Permanente that is um, privileged to take care of um, almost 13 million people? just under 13 million people. Uh, Hopefully everyone in this room is a member. If not, I need to sign you up because we're working (laughs) on getting to to 13 million people. In the midst of all this work, um, one of the individuals who deeply impacted me is in the room, and that's Bertha. And um, uh, I didn't know who Bertha was. And ironically, today is the first day that we actually met face-to-face. But Bertha sent me a letter and sent Don a letter. 
uh, that just impacted my life and whole thought process. Just period. It was um, one of those moments where you get something, you hear something, you see something, or you read something, and it both validates and also does something to you. Um, and that's my story of the birth of story that I have shared uh, in so many audiences with so many people um, about what I call the Bertha um, story. Uh, and so it's a privilege to know that Bertha works here at Kaiser Permanente and how much she is dedicated to preventing uh, death by suicide. And so hats off uh, to Bertha and the great work that she's doing as part of her calling. So Bertha is my, yeah. We have um, the, other, the other part about Bertha. We have um, we have a, a, a strategic framework that we're working on, as many, if not all, of you know, in Kaiser Permanente, the shared agenda. And the part of the shared agenda is um, how do we tell our stories, and uh, it is also a belief that we are fortunate at Kaiser Permanente to have so many wonderful people everywhere who have gone through and walked through uh, life experiences that are incredibly valuable to an organization who is seeking the best ways to care for 13, almost 13 million people. And as I have often said, um, as uh, uh, one of the uh, late uh, superstars of the music uh, world wrote a song, uh, who happens to be my cousin, he wrote a song called uh, Everybody is a Star. That's a gentleman named Sly Stone. And uh, I like to walk around thinking about that with people, that everybody is a star. It's just a matter of who's going to put the, the camera or the flashlight or uh, spotlight on you, and then you demonstrate that you're a star. So Bertha is my example of everybody is a star that uh, just sent the letter and then all the lights came on. Uh, it's just a great example of the wonderful people that we have uh, at Kaiser Permanente and just wonderful people on earth. Um, so that's my story about Bertha. The second one is, um, <clears throat> uh, I guess about two weeks ago now, uh, about two weeks ago, um, we had several families who each shared um, a very unfortunate situation, and that is uh, they had a son or a daughter uh, who was no longer with them uh, because of death uh, by suicide. And the parents felt strongly that they um, wanted time with me, period. And they wanted to um, do a couple of things. They wanted for me uh, and then the extension of me, the team, uh, they wanted us to hear about their loved one. Uh, they wanted to tell that story. Um, th they wanted us to appreciate who the person was and each of the families. The second part of it was they wanted us to have a glimpse into what the experience was like um, going through it and then surviving after it. Um, 
And then the third part was they wanted to offer suggestions uh, to Kaiser Permanente of what was working and what we ought to continue to think through um, as part of our commitment to our ongoing work around suicide prevention and just mental health treatment um, as an organization that um, millions of families are relying on. And so um, the team and I invited them in, and they spent a couple of hours uh, with me and the, uh, and the team, uh, and that's my, if you will, second moment. Um, and I'm, number one, uh, as I think all of you can imagine, um, I've never been so deeply impacted by a meeting uh, at that level uh, than what happened on that particular day. Um, Every single family, um, number one, the love for their child front and center um, felt at every level you can imagine. Number two, um, the stories of, you know, going from a, a, a baby to an adult to what happened uh, is... Um, Really something to go through first for the family, but also being able to tell that story to keep the memories alive um, was, for me, uh, just an honor to hear each one of those uh, and what that person who I did not have the privilege of meeting in person uh, meant to this world. And then the third one was um, the passion around wanting us to be even better and to succeed. Uh, and as one mother said in particular, wanting us to commit to doing everything in our power, every single thing in our power to prevent any other family having to suffer the way each of them suffered and suffers uh, every single day, as they described it. And I made that commitment, and we made that commitment, uh, and I have every intention to live up to that commitment uh, to the absolute extent possible uh, because every life matters. And they wanted to hear, uh, are we committed uh, to the next level? Uh, and we were clear that we are committed. We also agree that we're going to meet with them again and report back to them um, how we see our plan going forward um, and any modifications to it. Uh, and hopefully to continue to engage them uh, for guidance as we go forward, and they have talked about that, that will allow us to continue to work together um, as a result of this meeting, um, as a result of the situations that happen uh, in each of their families. And so... It's a privilege to be able to stop here and to spend a moment with all of you on this topic. And it's a privilege to work for an organization like Kaiser Permanente who is absolutely committed to, one, um, being the best at getting better, as Dr. Ed Ellison likes to say all the time and, and from Southern California, um, but also having a true commitment to being responsible um, for what we do as an organization. And part of that is to continue to learn and to grow as we continue to innovate and work together 
to meet the ever-growing demands of the people that we're privileged to take care of, as well as the people in the communities in which we exist, in which we also have a line of sight towards as well. Uh, and so I look forward to all of us continuing to figure it out. I look forward to us once again being on the cutting edge of the latest thinking, the latest practices, the latest work that needs to go into uh, this topic and what it means in the 21st century. Uh, and it's just an honor to just spend a few minutes with you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Um, really terrific. And, and Bernard, I'll just, um, I, I, I just want to reflect on it's fantastic for you to get to spend a little bit of time with us as we um, have these sessions. Um, we, we've, over the past several years, held these Institute for Health Policy Forum sessions um, in order to take a step back from the day-to-day -day issues, both of operations and the day-to-day -day issues of um, public policy in order to do just meeting with people we wouldn't normally meet with. Um, so it's, I, I think we're going to try to keep up these sessions as we go forward. We've done them on drug pricing. We've done several in the mental health space. We're doing things on telehealth. Sessie's whispering to me we're doing telehealth. Um, so there's, um, it's, it's really terrific. And, and actually, Bernard has joined us um, for substantial parts of, of all of these sessions, which I think demonstrates um, how critical we look at this as an organization, this set of issues that we're working on. So again, Bernard, thank you so much for, for joining us. Thank you. Appreciate it.